Hey there guys, Enzo here, team driver for Yokomo Racing USA and much more USA. And today I'm going to be talking to you about how to calibrate and adjust your brand new much more Flata Pro V2 speed control. So let's get into it. All right, so once you are ready to calibrate, you're going to want a uh, charge battery. Obviously we have our Flata Pro Speedo and our much more motor. I have a 6.5 paired up for uh, some mod four wheel drive action. Uh, so again, once we're ready to calibrate, we are set here. Before you do anything, before you turn it on, make sure that your endpoints on your radio and your expo is all set to factory standard. Uh, make sure that your endpoints are set to 100-100. Now, some radios, my radio, the Futaba and the Sanwa, do have the option to go higher than 100. Um, I've always been told and I've always done it at 100-100. Uh, when you go higher than that, some speed controls in the past have actually fried up from doing that. Um, it's really hit or miss sometimes. Uh, for the most part, most speed controls are always programmed to be calibrated at 100-100. When you go past that, it does give you more trigger pull, and it is a smoother trigger pull on the radio. Uh, but sometimes some speed controls can't handle it, or they're just not meant to be ran that way. So just remember, 100-100 on the radio. Um, and once you're ready to do that, turn on your radio. And uh, I went ahead and disconnected the motor fan so you guys can actually hear me. So we're going to go ahead and grab a 1.5 or a dirt pick, really anything that will allow you to get into the little set screw right here on the speed control. So go ahead and hold that down. Let's go ahead and power it up. So you hold it down and that's looking for neutral. Tap it once. So you hit it once. That's asking for full throttle, so let's go ahead and hold down full throttle, tap it again. Go ahead to full brake, that's the red and green. Let go, and you're all done, that's it. And that is how you calibrate your much more speed control. Super easy, um, really no headaches, none of that. Just a heads up, just a little tip, um, sometimes when you calibrate on some radios, it won't find um, full throttle. So something that you have to do on some of the radios is you have to go into your radio and reverse throttle, um, and then it will find uh, full throttle. Uh, I had to do it on my two-wheel drive. Uh, some receivers, sometimes the parameters are a little bit different per receiver, and sometimes you need to reverse them just so it does find that full throttle point. doesn't affect anything on track, just something that you might have to do if it doesn't recognize full throttle. So just a little tip and reminder there. Um, so that's how you calibrate it. Super straightforward, very easy, um, and you're ready to hit the track. But before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about ESC adjustment. So let's pull out the program card and get into that. All right, so once you're ready to start calibrating, uh, I mean adjusting your speed control, you're going to go ahead and grab your Flata program box, and uh, they give you the included servo wire. Go ahead and plug that into the port on your speed control. And then from there, just power it on, just like so, and we go into the setting mode. So you go ahead and let the speed control recognize the, um, the speedo. You can hit the button. There we go. It tells you your firmware version. And then we're in. So once you're in, it's very simple to navigate uh, the card. Uh, you, do, you have your scroll wheel to go through your settings and everything. And then to make a change, you use your select button, and then you hit it again to, to hit save. So, for example, say I want reverse, you hit the select and save button to where it's blinking, and then it goes to forward, reverse, and brake. And if I wanted to save that change and have that incorporated into my speed control, I would just hit the button once, and it makes a tone, and that notifies you that the change is saved on your speed control. So let's go ahead and move that back to forward and brake, as I don't use that. Um, some of the other changes, reverse speed, again this is if you do use reverse, uh, low voltage cutoff. Since this is a brand new build, I actually run this off. I do not run low voltage. Um, sometimes some of the races that we go to will be pushing the limits of those low capacity batteries and uh, it would really stink to be out on track and all of a sudden your car dies. So just to eliminate that from the stress of, of racing and, and when you're really on it, uh, I, we always run low voltage cut off uh, just to avoid any problems. And it never really affects the battery anyways, as it never harms them either when you go that low. Just make sure that you don't continue to run it until the car won't move, because then you will kill the cells in the battery. So just something to keep mind of. Um, normally, most of the racers at your track 
Um, the majority of them will almost always have low voltage cutoff turned off. So this is a preference thing. Um, I like it off. So on to the next one, drag brake. Uh, I run a lot less drag brake than that. I normally run about 7%. Initial drag brake, that's fine. Uh, full brake, that's a lot of brake for me, so I'll go to 75. Brake rate, let's turn that down to about 10. These are some of the settings that I like to start with. Brake frequency, um, four for the brake, nice and smooth. Uh, power level, since this is a 6.5, I'll start at power level two. Um, BT soft power, this is your softening. This is something that is used a lot in two-wheel drive mod on off-road and uh, even in touring car as well for the mod class. And this just smoothens out your trigger pull for the first initial uh, 20 or, or even more percentage than that. So I'll normally run about 5 for my BT soft power to start. And if the grip is a little lower that day or I just need it a little bit smoother coming out of the corners, uh, I'll step that up. And then for your soft range this is the trigger pull that you want this the BT softening to affect so for myself I like the initial 20 percent of the trigger pull uh, to experience the uh, the soft powering so the softening for that means that at the first 20 percent of your trigger pull it is going to smoothen out that bottom end so this is very useful if you run on the lower grip track or if maybe it takes a little while for your clay track to build grip um, it's something nice to have Drive frequency, 16K is perfectly fine to start for me. Uh, neutral dead band, I also run it at 6. Temp cutoff set, off, coast value. Uh, I don't run any boost, but I do run turbo, so we're going to go ahead and add some of that. So as far as turbo goes, I'm going to start with about uh, 15 degrees of turbo. And then I do not touch the slope. This is the angle at which the turbo is going to kick in per degree. Um... And then my turbo delay, you want to step that up to, actually it was already set right, so 0.1 is a good turbo delay. Uh, that's just going to ensure that your turbo doesn't actually initiate um, until you get onto the straightaway. Some guys run it at 0.05, and when you do that, um, you there are a couple sections on most layouts where you're just reaching full throttle, and when that happens is at 0.05 of a second that turbo kicks in. Um, and sometimes you do overshoot some of your corners because of that. So most of the time when we run turbo on two-wheel and in four-wheel, uh, you're going to end up running 0.1 for the turbo delay um, to do that. If it's a much smaller track and you need um, that giddy-up out of the corners to get from point A to point B much quicker, uh, say, for example, if I were running at Tacoma over in, in Washington State, uh, Tacoma's track is a lot tighter, a little bit more technical, so I could probably see myself running a, a lower um, turbo delay count. So just something to play around with and get a feel for. Um, BEC voltage, this is just your receiver voltage. Uh, for those guys that run high voltage servos, uh, you can incorporate a full high voltage by going to uh, 7.2, and you'll get much closer to a high voltage. But personally, for the 10 scale racing that we do, 6 volts has always been perfectly fine for me. Um, and then after that, that's rotation mode and the default, and we're pretty much back to uh, our regular mode. So very easy, as you guys saw, to go through the menu, uh, to make adjustments, and to get in touch with your speedo. So very simple to navigate. You got your wheel and your select and save button. Um, just one thing to remember, if you make a change and you do not hit the select save button, and if I were to power off my speed control right now, that change would not be incorporated. So just remember... Um, to always have that tone uh, ring off every time you make a change. Once your speedo is ready to hit the track, you just unplug it. Go ahead and unplug it from the speed control, and you are track ready, and you're ready to go out on the track. So that's how simple it is to navigate and work on the much more speed control. I just wanted to make a video again to talk about this and go over some of the settings that I personally like to use um, just as a starting uh, for four-wheel drive mod, you can always tweak the old settings for your preferences, which I'll probably end up doing, uh, since given this year I'm running the 6.5 instead of the 5.5 from last year. So I'll probably have to change it up myself uh, for the difference in power. So again, this video was meant to show you how to calibrate your new combo and then how to navigate the speed control with your much more program card. Um, so thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully this video has helped you guys. For those of you that uh, recently purchased a system 
or are planning to go over to and just wanted to see how the speed control works and operates. Uh, Speedo's been very reliable. I've been using it over a year now um, in both cars and last year as well. And it's been, again, phenomenal. Very smooth power, consistent, um, and have never really had any heat issues either. Um, but everything's been good. So, again, just an informative video for those guys that are going to be switching over um, or are looking at it. Um, so, yeah, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.